Okay, um, so the title of my message tonight is Back to Basics. And um, I actually preached this out at Rama. This was my second sermon I preached at Rama. Um, and it was just, it, it was the stirring on the inside of me about how so many people, they get like on their little um, rabbit trails and they just, they, they don't take, they don't, they, they go off on these little things and they forget about what it's all about. And what it's all about is the, the blood of Jesus. Jesus, the fact that he came for us and he loves us. And because he loves us, he has given us that love on the inside of us for other people so that we can love other people the same way he loves us. Right? So, and recently I've been reading this book called um, The Miracle of the Scarlet Thread. And it's just, I'm like, I'm in the first chapter, okay? And it's just so good. There's so much revelation in that, that um, this man, he, he was, he lived his whole life of just not understanding. He grew up in church. He didn't understand how the Old Testament and the New Testament kind of came together. He didn't understand, you know, well, it seems like just a bunch of old stories and rituals. And then in the New Testament, there's this guy named Jesus. And how do the two connect? And and then he started praying and asking God for as he was um, as he was studying that God would just reveal to him what exactly it was that connected the two. And he then he said that there just became the this light of the scarlet thread that was woven from the very beginning of time until now, and that it just continues and continues. It's the scarlet thread that's the blood of Jesus that that brings it all together. It knits it all together, and it's the thing that holds us all together. Is the very blood of Jesus in the in the beginning? He was the promised seed, and he has continued his. He was he was the the blood that saved the people. People in out, out coming out of Egypt, he saved them. It was the representation. He, he was he was their savior in the desert. He was the flowing water for them. He was the the cord that hung out of the window in Jericho that saved uh, Rahab. He was and then he was the baby that was born king, and he is our savior and he is our coming king. It, throughout all time, there has been Jesus. The whole plan was Jesus. And, and not just, you know, oh, he came to save us. Why did he come? He came because he loved us. He loves us. And I'm so glad they sang that song tonight. That's one of my favorite songs. And just the, the love that Jesus has for us is overwhelming when you actually sit down and think about it, how much he loved us. And, you know, the, one, one of the most quoted scriptures, I guess, is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And I think we quote it so much that sometimes people are just kind of like, yeah, John 3, 16, <laughs> you know, we get it. And we're like, okay, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a good verse. It's a great scripture. But when you think about it and you sit there and you meditate on it, God so loved us. He sent his son to die for us, a, a sinful people who couldn't even keep the law for like five days, for 30 minutes. They couldn't even keep it. But God was merciful and he loved us. And he said, oh, but I love them. And Jesus offered himself. To, to come and die and suffer and come and he gave up the, 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 the God part, no, not, that's not right, the right way to say it, but he, he gave that up to come and live as a human. He gave that up to come and live as a human and come and, ex- and just live and experience the temptations that we experience so that he can say, I, you know, whenever you're like, God, you just don't know what I'm going through. Oh, but he does. Because he was here. He experienced the same temptations, the same things that you experience every day. He experienced them and he overcame them. And because he overcame them, he lives inside of us and we can overcome them. Right? Okay, so that wasn't even everything I was going to like really go on, but that was awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to talk tonight about the blood of Jesus and what all that, that means. The blood of Jesus was his love. It says in um, that, hold on, let me find it. 
He says in Hebrews 9:12, oh no, Revelation 1:5, that it was his love that gave his blood. Jesus Christ, whose whose love offered up his blood for us. And the way I saw that, it was I was actually just reading this book. It was like it's like some Christian novel kind of thing, and it was really awesome, you know, really good. But um, I was reading it, and I got to the end, and this this man was like kind of trapped, and he was trying to get out and everything, and um, you know, some crazy stuff happened. And at the end of the book was the song, "There Is a Fountain Filled with Blood Drawn from Emmanuel's Veins." And when sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. Well, I was singing the song, and it just kind of like, I was like, there is a fountain filled with, I didn't say blood, I said love. And I was just like, it was like this profound, just like, moment for me of, huh, it wasn't just blood that came out. When he was on the cross and he was shedding his blood for us, the, every stripe he took, when the blood and water, when he was pierced in the side and the blood and water flowed out, it wasn't just blood coming out. No. The, everything flowing out of him, it was utter, pure love for us that was flowing out of him. Everything he did, every moment on that cross was because he loved us. And And then I realized as I started thinking more about what blood does for us in our own human bodies, did you know that blood is the thing that we cannot live without? You can live without a a lung, a kidney, your stomach. Did you know you can live without your stomach? How crazy is that? Um, And you can live without all these other organs. You can be brain dead and science can still keep you alive. Medical science can still keep you alive. But if you do not have blood in your body, there is no way you will live. There's no way. And I was just thinking, how awesome a representation is that for us? Because as a body, we are represented as a body in the Bible, are we not? We are shown as the body of Christ. What binds that body together? What flows throughout that whole body? Love. The love of God is what flows throughout the entire body. And without it, we cannot function and do the things we are supposed to do if we do not have that love of God on the inside of us. The love of God is what makes us able to do the things we should be able to do. It is what stirs on the inside of us and, and causes us to, to love on people who are unlovable. It causes us to do the things that we don't want to do, go the places we don't want to go, smile when we really don't want to smile, hug people and tell them we love them when we really don't feel like we love them at that second. But God's love on the inside of us compels us to do the things that we don't want to do. In um, 1 Corinthians 1, 3, I'm going to pull that up if you guys want to turn there. 1 through 3, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. Woo! I will get it right. But um, it's this part that Paul is talking about what, when you live without love in your life, you, you're basically nothing. Uh, you, it's like I, I was watching a movie one time, and um, one of the characters said, a life without love is no life at all. You, if you try to live your life without having love in it, you could have awesome faith, you can testify, you can do all these great things, but if you don't have love in your life, in your heart, you're nothing. You are nothing. It says right here, and I'm reading Amplified, so bear with me because it's really long, okay? If I can speak in the tongues of men and even angels but have not love that reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for and in us, I'm only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, and understand all the secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have the sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, God's love in me, I am nothing, a useless nobody, even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food. And if I surrender my body to be burned, or in order that I may glory, 
but have not love, God's love in me, I gain nothing. And a lot of times we skip over those first three verses because we just want to go to what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. You know, like we make these really cute songs and they're awesome. And we, yes, we need to know what love is. And we need to understand that that's how we should live our lives. But we also need to understand that if we don't live our lives that way, you know, people are just like, well, I don't want to be patient. I don't want to be kind. I don't want to trust these people. I don't want to, you know, just forgive them for no reason. You know, like they've done, you don't know what they've done to me. Well, love doesn't take account of a suffered wrong. But, you know, but, but, but I just don't want to live that way, okay? You know, so just get over it. Well, the Bible says if you have nothing, if you don't have love in your life, you're nothing. You're a nobody. You're basically, you know, just, you're like a piece of grass that's grown and died. You know, like, what was the reason of your life? The reason that we are here the reason that we come into the kingdom is not just so we can get, 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 get. It's so that we can love, 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 love. And as we love on others and we give to others, he blesses us. That's, we're here for others. That's what the, the, the body of Christ is about. It's not about us. It's about everyone else. And I think sometimes we get our, our focus off of it. We we are selfish creatures. We get inside, and I'm guilty of this too. I'm just saying, I'm a pretty selfish person. But that's why I have to confess over myself. I am patient. I am kind. I, I love others. God's love in me will never fail. Even if I fail, his love in me will not fail. And because it will not fail, it will bring me out in victory over my own emotions over my own feelings, you know? Okay, and um, so it just, I want us to realize that how important that, that love is if supposed to be in our lives, right? And so I was just, and as I was thinking on this and meditating on it, I was thinking, oh, you know, what does blood do? Well, number one, it keeps us alive, right? But how does it keep us alive? Blood circulates what? oxygen throughout our entire body. You know, as the heart pumps it and we breathe in, it goes through our lungs and grabs some oxygen, takes it through our whole body and all the way around. As it's doing that, it is re replacing the bad stuff with oxygen and taking the bad stuff, which is carbon dioxide, out of our body. And it takes it all the way around. So every time you breathe in and out, you are replacing the oxygen and removing the carbon dioxide. We learn, learned that in like second grade, right? So, <laughs> um, you know, so that's, that's what blood does. So as blood in the human body does that, the blood of Christ, the blood of the, of the body of Christ, he comes in and his love comes in. And as his love comes in, he's bringing goodness into our lives, and he is removing the bad if we let him. If we let him, he will come in. He'll bring that oxygen or that blessing or that, what, that comfort, whatever it is we need at that time. He brings it in, and he'll take the, the bad away if we allow him to come in and do that. And if, if you come in to, to strife with another believer, you know what blood does in a body? What happens when you get a cut? It clots, and it turns into a scab, and it heals over, and then after a couple of days, or however big it was, you know, eventually it heals, and you go, huh, look at that. Just perfectly fine, right? I mean, I hear, I hear, I cut my um, thumb open. Some of you were in the church when I did that, because <laughs> I was disobeying my parents. And I jumped out of the car, and I slammed the door on it, and I had nine stitches across here, and it's a great little scar right there, and my thumb's kind of twisted now because of it, but glory to God, I still have a thumb, right? <laughs> but it's, I've got a scar there, but you never know. You know, it's completely healed up, perfectly fine. Why? Because the blood came in, it did, what it, it did its job, it healed that area, it scabbed over, did what it needed to do, the body repaired itself, and then finally that scab came away, and now I'm not left with this beautiful, perfect skin. That's what God wants to do in us. When we come into strife with other believers, if we allow his love to come into the situation, 
He will come in and fix it all up. He will scab it over, you know, and then he'll go to work between the two of you and he'll fix it all up. And you have to, you know, allow him to do this. And he'll come in and you, you let yourself get, throw away the hate, throw away the frustration, just let yourself love. And he'll come in and he'll fix it all up. And the next thing you know, it's all better. You don't even remember why you're mad. I've had to do this. Because uh, you, you come into these situations where you're like, I cannot believe they did that to me. They said that about me? Oh my goodness. And you just want to like, you want to go over and choke them, to be honest. You know, you just, you do. You're like, you want to pull their hair out, hang them up by their toenails. Oh my goodness. You know, and, but then you have to kind of, you have to fix yourself, get yourself right, love on them despite the fact that you don't want to love on them. Get over it. Get over yourself and put his love on there. Slap some blood on that thing. And get it all fixed up. Get, your, get rid of your stinking attitude. Get over it. And just realize that they made a mistake. You've made plenty as well. So you can't, don't hold it against them the rest of their life. Okay? You'll probably say something bad about someone else eventually. We all have. We all do. It's okay. We still love each other, right? Yeah? Well, just let, that, let his love come in and fix it up, get over it, and move on, and it'll be like it never happened. Because why? His love came in and fixed it. The, the love of God is so strong, and it's the most powerful force on ever, ever even imagined. God is love. Everything works by love. Faith works by love. We are a faith church. It's in our name. Well, how does our faith work? We can't just say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Well, why do we believe we can have faith in a God? Why? Because Abraham had faith in in our God. Because he understood that God was love and God loved him. And because God loved him and made a covenant with him, he understood God's love for him and he was able to have faith in God so that the things that he desired would come to pass. The things that God promised him would come to pass. And if we have faith in our God, in his love, then we are able to live a life uh, worthy of him. And we are able to, to live a life of love. And I just, I, I'm, every time I read the Bible, I just can't get over it. Like, every time I read, I'm like, I get so excited when I come across something that's just like, he loves us. Ah, I get so excited. I just get, like, everything I read, I'm like, ah. But, you know, well, you know, and you're like, he was telling you not to, like, sin. How do you get love out of that? He was telling me not to because he loves me, and he knows that sin leads to destruction. He loves me so much that he's going to tell me not to do it. Like, how, how, how much could you explain? Like, he loves you. He, he just, he does. And it's like when a parent goes and they tell their child not to touch the stove. Why do they tell their child that? Because they want to be mean. No, it's not because they want to be mean. It's because they know it's going to burn them. It's going to hurt. And um, they, they understand that they, because they love their child, they will not let their child do something that's going to harm them. Do children disobey sometimes? Yes. Do they touch the stove sometimes? Yes. What happens? They get burned. Did you know that already? Yes. Did you tell them not to do it? Yes. But you still love them despite the fact that they messed up. And it's okay. They'll heal. The blood will fix it. (laughs) You know, it's okay. But uh, anyway, where was I going with that? I don't remember. But anyway, um, I just really want us to remember the reason that we're here. The reason that we are loved is because God loves us in the beginning. He, he created us. We are his children. He made a covenant with Abraham, and we are now in a- Abraham's seed through the promise of God, through accepting Jesus as our Lord, and it's all good, and we can, oh, it's just so, it's so good, and this so basic. 
this one verse right here in Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 24, um, it says that, and to Jesus the mediator, the go-between agent of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of mercy and better and nobler, more gracious message than the blood of Abel which cried out for vengeance. That's just a, another reminder of how his love for us, the blood of Jesus, it's, always, it's still to this day crying out for us. It's not dead. It's alive. It's living. And it's on the mercy seat of Christ. He is flesh and bone now. Why? Because his blood is on the mercy seat and it's crying out. Whenever you mess up, whenever you do something you shouldn't do, that blood speaks. Mercy, Father. Mercy. You can, you can boldly go before the throne of God because that blood has cried mercy. It has called for mercy because you accepted Jesus as your Lord. That mercy in that blood is just calling for you. It's calling your name. And it's just, oh Lord, I just, I get so happy and I forget about it sometimes when you actually sit down and think about the goodness of God and how much he loves us and how he gave his blood and how the blood is just sitting there and doing nothing but crying for mercy for us crying through the love that it has for us for mercy. It's just, it, it, it does something on the inside of us when we, when we think about it and when we meditate on it. And it helps us to, to want to do better, to want to live better lives because we love him, because he loved us so much that he died. Should we not want to live a life worthy of that love? Should we not want to? It's, it's living on the inside of us. That, that his love is living on the inside of us. He is living on the inside of us. He is, he's seeing everything we do. And I mean, for me, I mess up, yes. And I, I, I don't want to all the time. I don't want to. I, I want to live a life holy of him. Sometimes I mess up and I, I thank God for his forgiveness, which is his mercy, right? He forgives us quickly. Hallelujah. But we're, because, he, because of his love on the inside of us and because we can love him because he first loved us, we can live lives that are holy, lives that are worthy of the blood that was shed for us and that we will not make light of the price that was paid so many years ago for us to be able to live the way we are able to live, for us to be able to have the relationship with our Heavenly Father that we're able to have. God is so good to us that he gave that love. He, he sent his son. His son freely offered himself as the sacrificial lamb to come and die and to take away our sins. And he's so holy, we didn't deserve it. We still don't deserve it. But because we are made new in him, because he, he has come for us, he chose to pay that price for us. We are now worthy. We are now worthy of that love. And so don't let it go to waste. Don't let it go to waste. E every day, make a decision to walk in love, to walk a life worthy of the price that was paid for it. Because it's all about him, and it's all about others. You are last. It's, a, it's a, the acronym for joy. Jesus first, others second, you last. That's how you can live a life full of joy. People live lives and they don't understand, why am I not happy? Why, why, don't, why am I not happy? I just don't understand. I have all this stuff. I, I, you know, I, I just don't get it. Are you putting others before yourself? Are you loving others? Are you in love with your heavenly father? He's, is, is that what's filling your inside or are you trying to junk, throw all the stuff in there so that you can, you know, be happy for a moment? Yesterday, we were at the mall, okay? Love shopping when I have money, okay? Spend money I really didn't need to spend. Probably should have saved it, but it's okay. And for a moment, I was really happy. I was so excited. I was like, ah, I got this new person. It's really cute. It's right here, right? <laughs> So it's really cute, and it's adorable, and everything, you know, just precious. It's my favorite pattern that's now been discontinued, which is kind of sad, but that's okay. Anyway, so for a moment, I was really excited, and I still kind of am excited. But, you know, afterwards, it's kind of like wore off, and I'm like, 
Ah, I got another thing. You know, it's things hold no value for a long period of time because it's just a thing. It's temporal. I know that because that purse is made of cloth, probably in about three months, knowing myself, it's going to be dirty. It's probably going to have a hole in it. And because I'm around kids all the time, it's probably going to have some candy on it, you know, somewhere in there, maybe a little bit of gum stuck in there somewhere. You know, it's, <laughs> it's probably going to be dirty, okay? Because it's temporal, because it's not an eternal thing. It's just a thing. But when we step into the realm of the Spirit and we start e- experiencing those things and we start, sh- and start loving others and we start giving of ourselves that way, we will see more fulfillment in our lives. We'll see why we're here. We'll understand that because when we give to others, when out of, it doesn't have to be things we give to others. It can just be a part of you. It can be your time. It can be a hug. You don't understand the importance of a hug for some people. I'm a huggy person. When I don't get to hug someone, I'm like, Argh! you got away before I could hug you. You know, and it freaks some people out, but that's okay. Uh, they'll get over it. Um, you know, so it's, it's those things that speak into people's lives. And a simple hug could turn someone's day completely around just because you listened to your heart and you did something because God needed you to do it, because that person needed it. You know, and it, that's the love of God is when we listen to our heart and we do things for people that we don't understand why we're doing it that our, our, our mind does not get it. Why am I doing this? Is it because they're a likable person? I don't even know them sometimes, you know. You, sometimes you don't even know why you're doing anything other than God's love compels you to do it. And so I just really wanted to emphasize tonight how God's love plays a part in our everyday lives. You know, it's, it's not just something that was, a, was in a book that we hold, you know, or a, an app that's on our laptop or uh, tablet or phone or whatever, you know. It's not just something in there. The blood of Jesus is something that every day is part of you. Every day, it's fu- it's you, if you look in your own life, you'll see how his, his hand is touching every aspect of your life with, that you're letting him touch. You'll see how his, he's guiding you and you know, putting you places that otherwise you wouldn't have been. And it's just like, oh, it's not just stories from a book. It's a living thing that is, that is inf- not infiltrating. It's... It, but it is every part of your being, every part of your life. If you allow him to, he will come in and he'll fix it all up because he loves you and he'll, he will bring you up because, so that you can touch others with that love. And so I really just wanted to focus on God's love and how, his, how we just, we need to real, realize and to meditate a lot on the love of Jesus and how much he loves us. And it's not just a mushy, gushy kind of love. It was the greatest of all loves and how it, it will drive us forward. It will fulfill your life. It will fulfill your heart's desires. And it will help you to just touch others in a way that you never, ever would have been able to touch them otherwise. And so whenever you're reading your Bible and you're not understanding why is this in here, why are we talking about sacrifices, why are we doing this, understand that the picture it's painting is one of salvation from beginning to end. It's one of, one of understanding the love of God from beginning to end. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys tonight. And I love you all. And that's not just a mushy-gushy kind of love. It's true, deep love. You guys are my family, and I love you all. And um, so I just want to let you guys know that and um, want to remind you of his love for you. And just don't ever forget it. Whenever you come into a place where you're kind of 
a little sad or whatever, or just things are not going right. You remember his love for you and how he has given you the victory he, in every situation. He is your comforter, your shelter. He's your friend. He is your, your victory, your overcomer. You know, greater is he who's in you than he is in the world. Why? Because of love, okay? So I just wanted to encourage you guys tonight. Um, and that's all I have. <laughs>